Welcome to my third of four presentations on Y-DNA. This presentation is going to cover how you use SNPs as opposed to STRS, S-N-P, in, in your work of understanding and matching your Y-DNA. So let's look at where we've gone so far. In session number one, there's a video out there which you can watch again and again until you feel comfortable with it. And it starts out by describing some of the methods and places that the DNA indicates that we came from and how accurate that method is. Then we go to Genetic Genealogy Ireland's contributions, and they come up with a whole lot of ideas of new ways to do our DNA. And then we get to the basic question. The women say, I have no Y-DNA. And I say, yes, I have Y-DNA for one of my seven branches, but I don't have the other six. So we both have to use the methods in step four of looking at family, ancestors, neighbors, using the GPS standard and other DNA methods like the ancestry test to find other people to test. And how do we find it, your study your surname study on Family Tree DNA website we looked into and showed you step by step. And we introduced the tools from My McGee which help you analyze the DNA once you get the stir results. And on session two, we likewise have the video out there that you can record, listen to it anytime you want. And I specified the fact there's the 16 great-great-grandparents we just talked about that each have a different surname that we're trying to study. And then we looked at how does the Y-DNA pass from generation to generation and who has the Y-DNA you're looking for. Then we looked at STIR testing. What is a STIR? What does it look like? And then again, we looked at the surname projects to see what the STIRs are doing in that area. And then we showed you great at great length many, many more things you could look into. A short tandem repeat, or STR, is a region of DNA composed of a short sequence of nucleotides repeated many times. Since the number of repeated sequences in a given STR varies from person to person, pinpointing these variants can be useful in DNA fingerprinting. As the name implies, the repeated stretches in STRs are short, only two to 10 base pairs long. For this reason, and because they are dispersed more evenly throughout the genome than the longer variable number tandem repeats, or VNTRs, STRs are favored by forensic labs. Large databases of information on STRs in the general population tell analysts how much variation exists at any given STR location. That information can help forensic analysts determine the conclusiveness of a match between two samples. If 10% of people have the same number of repeats at a given STR, for example, finding a match at that site is merely suggestive that two samples are a match. If two sites with the same prevalence match, the odds drop to 1 in 100 that the similarity is coincidental. If 13 sites match, the odds that any two people would possess such a fingerprint are so small, about 1 in 10 trillion, that the result can be considered a definitive match. And in session three, here's a list of things we're going to try to cover. Basically, this, lesson, this session is on SNPs, which is the other way to look at DNA, and we'll look at that in great detail, the Y-DNA. So SNP DNA measurements, that's what we're going to look at. An entire set of 23 human chromosomes is called a genome. The human genome is composed of 3 billion base pairs. Variation at a single base pair is called a SNP, or single nucleotide polymorphism. When the body makes new cells, 
it doesn't make many mistakes. But nobody's perfect. Sometimes, when the genome is copied to make a new cell, a single base pair gets left out, added, or substituted. Single base pair substitutions create SNPs. There are around 10 million SNPs in the human genome, which account for many of the genetic differences between you and everyone else on the planet. Some SNPs account for differences in appearance. Others can affect how we develop diseases or respond to drugs. Most SNPs, however, seem to lead to no observable differences between people at all. Since variants are passed down from one generation to the next, the number of differences between your DNA and your neighbors can tell you how closely you are related to each other. So to review what the video just showed you, you can have a place left out like the T and C at the top. As you see below, there's a blank spot. You can have one replaced where you can see the T and C are being replaced with a CC. You can see the substitution where they put a different letter in there, a G. So let's dig into SNP testing. What does SNP testing offer you that you didn't get with store testing? Well, first it's going to do the direct mail line looking at actually where the branches are and where do things separate. Where the stir test just showed you how closely you were matched each other. NGS testing can bring you even further into the future, which will take you right down to the particular family SNP, perhaps. So how do they name these things? Like anybody else in the scientific field, when you get ready to start naming something, you start with A. Then you discover there's two parts to A, so you have A1A and A1B. Then you discover A1B has two parts, and you call those parts B and CT. And then you go through the alphabet, you see in the left column, we're going to I, J, K, L, R, T. In the right column, we show some of the particular ones on further down the tree with the most modern, most recent SNP once being R2. But the majority of things we're going to look at are in R1A and R1B. 
Here's the whole tree as shown in some shorthand. And you can see up in the upper left hand corner they say Y chromosomal atom. And you see A, and we've recently added A0 minus because we found somebody before the first somebody. And as you go down through there, you'll see red changes where there's new changes, new things adding. And as more and more tests are done, we find more and more details about the phylogenic tree of human wide chromosome DNA haplogroups. When you look at one of the better an analysis companies to analyze your Y-DNA, it's YFull.com, which is a Russian company. This is the method of how they determine when you have a new private variant as opposed to a new branching SNP. They want to know first, when they look at this new variant, they see, does it have an alternatively known name? Does somebody else already name it? The variant is it sorted on one and two tabs. The variant has no homology. The variant does not have more than one additional localization. A total of 75,216 variants were named and uploaded to YBrow's database. The variants are named according to special algorithm to protect full privacy. The problem with that original naming system was that as they went further in division, you'll see here on this screen, these levels of the R haplogroup now have like 14 letters after them. And it's impossible to remember those. And they're so similar, you get confused when you work with them. So they've changed the naming method from that, where you had the beginning letter and the cascading letters for each branch, to where now they just have the R and the naming for the current branch. So if you look here, you'll see that we're looking at around 10,000 years ago, 17,000 years ago up here at the top where M343 is. So that would be R1BM343 at that location. As we come down, you can see this shows both naming conventions down into the, not quite to the historic period here in the bottom of this slide. And we've got R1B1A2, and we're starting to get into that long stuff that caused us so many problems. And M269 up at the top of the big red arrow is where many, many of us are. And you'll see how they've got in red underneath it those longer names that are not working real well. So instead of saying, for example, uh, let's look at on the right hand side at the tail of the red arrow and you'll see Z2103. Well, we could call that RZ2103, or the other name for it would be R1B1A2A1. And you can see how it's getting cumbersome there already. And that's still between five and 14,000 years ago. When you look at the division in that M269, there's a, a lot of people in that area and you can see the Western Europeans, 57% of them in that group, Northwestern or 55% of them, and all the way down the list. In this particular study, there were 1,300 people. And you can go to the website wikipedia.org to see more charts like this and the breakdown of the various groups. Here's a chart that shows M269, but it takes the, the top five groups and just puts them in a straight line and not showing the branching. And then it shows the subgroups. And you notice as you get down in the chart, they quit dropping that. They start dropping that longer label. They just have the short label. And for the longest time, that SRY 2627, where the red arrow is, was where my family was shown to be, my Y chromosome. And they were showing around 5,000 years ago was when that occurred. Here's the newer from y -fold, and you can see as we jump down in the upper left-hand corner with the gold background, you see RZ207. And to the right of that, you see it was formed around 3,400 years ago, and the time to common ancestor was that same number. And as you come down, you'll see the number of years shuts, cuts it down dramatically. So when we come down a third of the way, you see RY15783 right below the first yellow label of 3,000 years ago. And you'll see that one shows it was formed 3,400 years ago, and its common ancestor is 3,000 years ago. But if we go down to the next yellow bunch, 
we now drop down to still 3,000 years ago when it was formed, but the most recent ancestor we're looking at was 450 years ago. And then the final group, one which was my unique surname group, we've got 3,000 years ago when it might have been formed, but these particular people, their an common ancestor was only 275 years ago. So that's the, what this page is showing you a little cleaner without all the arrows. You can also see the closest ones next to you are your closest relatives. So you'll see the, the bottom four is my group of people I tested, and you see they're all from Pennsylvania. Above that's a group that doesn't indicate where they're from, and above that's another group that's from Mexico. So how do you get that kind of information? How do you find out what your SNPs are? Well, you can actually buy a SNP. You can get different kinds of tests to buy these SNPs. There are three kinds of SNP tests, where you buy one single SNP, or you buy a group of SNPs, which is the SNP panels, or you buy a next generation test like Big Y, where it goes through your DNA, your Y DNA, and finds all the SNPs that exist there, all in one pass. The, that next generation is expensive, so most people do the terminal SNPs first. I don't find that too productive, but we'll talk about that more as we move forward. Here's a list of some of the packs you can buy. You see they each have a label so you can order it. And most of them are $120, $119, $99, depending on how many SNPs are in them. And this is the Family Tree DNA product. And remember, how much did you pay to get your stir testing? These are the current upgrade prices for stirs. And you can spend a couple hundred dollars pretty quickly there and notice that you're, you're spending $200 or $100 on SNP tests. You're spending a couple hundred dollars or $300 here. But the big Y test, if you buy it on sale, it's like $400 total and it gives you all of the things we've talked about. All of the stirs and all of the SNPs. So you can see it's $425 on this sale brochure. But at the same time, you could get coupons that were $100 off. So it's, we would expect the price to continue down. We'll see what it is next time it comes on sale. It usually comes on sale twice a year. Okay, your matches, terminal SNP analysis. What's a terminal SNP? It sounds like you're dead. Well, the terminal SNP is the last one, the most recent one they found that's unique to you, perhaps. Maybe there's a group of you, like in my chart, there were four of us. So if you open your individual's match list on Family Tree DNA, you can see down to somewhat many markers. You can sort the list by haplogroup. You can note the, note the terminal SNP and matches and how often they occur. You can plot SNPs on a haplotree. Do all these branches all on the same or different branches? So you're looking and trying to survey the whole thing and what does it look like? So here's the page on Family Tree DNA you actually go to. You notice that it has an upper right hand corner, the final results, the labels for you for your tests. But at the green arrows, we're seeing where you look at Y DNA, as opposed to the bottom section that says Big Y. We're going to look at that next week. So you can look at the matches and you can look at the haplotrees trees to get a feel for what's going on. So here's the matches at 37 markers, our old STIR markers. You can see these surname projects. There's 8,900 surname projects with 560,000 records in the database. But here we look at something different. To the right-hand side of the columns are your same STIRs you were looking at before. But you see in red the column titled haplogroup. And the M uh, the, the, the types that are in red are estimated by a big Y, by big Y, by family tree DNA based on the stir values. The ones in green, green have been tested. If you look down near the bottom, you'll see my group of four that are in green, because those have been tested by the big Y. There's many tools if you're managing the surname group yourself. As you can see, this page is a list of pages of tools to help you as an administrator figure out what's going on and how to sort them. Now, why do you want to group people together? Well, obviously, if they're 
the same related to each other and they should be together in your chart so you can see that. But different pieces of evidence point to a different probability that they're closely related. There's a system developed by the Irish called MPRs and it's a criteria for grouping or markers of potential relatedness. And that's trying to get the groups in Ireland together within the last 700 years. And this is the list of the four things you look at. Four things, 10 things. So the blue are traditional markers and the red are genetic markers. Or another way to say that, the blue are the things we've done for a long time and the red are the things we do with SNPs. And you'll see we're looking at genetic distance. We're looking at what's called TIP24, which is a particular test. We're looking at demarcation. In other words, are there, is there big gaps between the genetic distance? We're looking to see if there's rare values in the SIRS. And then we're looking to see, are the matches with terminal SNPs consistent? And is the testing consistent? So like I said a moment ago, why DNA haplogroups and SNP results? Pre predicted results are in red and confirmed results are in green. So if you want to get be sure of your test, you'll do the A test to find out what your SNPs are. If you want to rely on the higher level number, the red letter, that's usually about 6,000 years ago, which I don't feel does me any good for genealogy. Here's the Raider DNA study group. Just my people that have joined my group. There's 83 people that have actually done Y DNA in the group, and you can see each row is a different kind of DNA. I'm not talking about closely related, I'm talking about totally different related. I'm talking about not related in the last 6,000 years. So you'll see out of these 83 people, there's some groups, two bigger groups with 18 people and 22 people, but a whole lot of other people that are just grouped a few people and they aren't related to anybody else. Now we got that by having the SNP values. So how do you do this? How do you buy a SNP? You go to the tool where you buy upgrades, buy a SNP, and you pick what you want. And down near the bottom, you'll see there's a list of SNPs. And here's a package, for example. This is for R1B people that are in a particular location on the tree. So you need to work with somebody that understands the tree to figure out where you are to figure out which pack you might want to order. This particular pack has on special at the time I copied this and instead of being a smaller number, it's 154 SNPs. Well, Big Y, this is 154 SNPs for $99. Big Y gives you 15,000 SNPs for $400. Do I have to order Y chromosome DNA stir test before I take a SNP test? Yes, now that's true. Someday, hopefully soon, they'll let you take the Big Y test without taking anything else and then you'll get everything at once. Here's that select a product page again, and you see the first listing starting with the letter, the number and then the letters A1, A100, and there's a big long list of packs. So for example, if you're a predicted applet group, if the M269, you're in this group of large Western European people, and they're found some in Turkey, some in the Northern Fertile Crescent, but most of them are in Western Europe. Here's the current tree as it's de depicted by Family Tree DNA. You'll see at the top, the SNP M269 is a place where things branch off. And you'll see there's L23 that branches off to the side and then there's an arrow going down to more. And you can see each one branches off. Sometimes you can see more than one. So how do you chart these things? How do you figure out where you are on that tree? The thing they're looking at is the Y chromosome, as you might imagine, and it has 60 million base pairs. About half of the Y cannot be sequenced because it's too repetitive. They can't tell which loop they're on. The solid pink are too similar to the X chromosome. It sort of blends at the end sometimes to the X. The yellow and the blue range are the best hunting ground for reliable SNPs. And that gives you about 25 million places to look to see if there's any errors. Thomas Cran is the guy who invented the big Y. He used to have crawl the Y. And he worked for Family Tree DNA after he had his own company in Germany. He is from Germany. And they had some discussion about whether they should have this stuff public or private. 
And after that, Thomas had his own business called YSeq now again. So he's the real expert in all this stuff. So if you go to YSeq, you can order SNPs there also for about half the price that you can order them at Family Tree DNA. But if you ask Thomas, what should you do before you've done either? He says, take the big Y first. It just doesn't make any sense to mess around with SNPs until you know what you're looking for. Here's the chart that he maintains. It's a database of all the SNPs. And by the way, if you have him test your SNPs, he will name them for you and you won't have to mess around with other things. And there's a big discussion about whether that's good or bad. But if you look at this, you can in the white box where it says search next to it, you can type in the physical address of where the SNP is you're looking for. So it, they're looking at right there, they're looking at position 14 million to 14 million 100. And you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Down near the bottom, you see the letters going across the screen. It's too small to probably see from the back row, but it's C, T, A, T, A, A. It's got the, each letter, each chemical is in a different color. So each letter is a position on that tree of millions of places. And you'll see down in the middle, there's a little tiny box and it says Y316 above it. That's a SNP that's at that, local, that location. And up above, you'll see that location normally has an A, but this particular person does not have an A. Here it is zoomed in better so you can get a better look at it. And you'll notice that the SNPs are named on the bottom part. There's a bunch of them there. What is there? Six, eight, nine, twelve SNPs named in that in this particular agent region, and we're between seventeen thousand five hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred, or five hundred eight to five twenty. So we're like in twenty positions. We have that many SNPs. And Thomas Cran, of course, was announcing just this week that they've got over one million SNPs currently named on that whybrowse.org website. You can go to look at it at any time. You can play with this tool all you want. It's all free. Here it is even closer. If you couldn't see it in the back row, hopefully you can see it now. I've got it where you can see one SNP that's at position. Let's see if I can get where the comma is. 18 million, around 100, 18 million, 17,800 before 800, 780. And here's Thomas Cran's website. And he's now offering tests, the bigger test, the Y sequence whole genome testing for $1,199. Hurry up and buy it right away. Don't, don't wait now. And here's what you get when you buy a SNP from him. You can click a particular one and he charges $18, whereas the Family Tree DNA charges something like $35. Big Y tests 10 million base pairs. Walk the Y only tested 400,000, about a half a million. Full Genome says only 14 million base pairs are in their mappable regions. Which SNP is which? Three companies use different naming systems for their SNPs. So when you see them named, you'll see a certain set of letters in front of them for each one of these three companies. Where does the SNP exist? In other words, are the two SNPs in the same position, given different names by different companies? That problem does exist, yes. So where in the world is your SNP found? And here we're talking about geography. National Geographic gives you these heat maps, but they only give them to you for way back. And notice this is saying 1,000 years to 100,000 years ago. But if you look across the bottom, you'll see the names of the SNPs, starting with P305 on the left and SRY2627 on the right. And those SRY2627 is 5,000 years ago, they estimate. So this is where your people, my people, were 5,000 years ago. That doesn't help me a whole lot in knowing where to search records, does it? Here's another map that shows the different kinds of DNA and where. And I think the next slide will show it to you closer. Yeah, there you go. So you can see the I's. If you look very closely, you can see E's and D's and J's and all kinds of letters. And this is, of course, where they think that names that SNP first happened. Not where they're living today, but where they first happened. 